Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Macros are small programs that record your keystrokes as you perform a task and then save the actions you perform as a Visual Basic module, which is a type of program file. When you run the macro later, it repeats your keystrokes and thus repeats your actions. This is why they are great for automating repetitive tasks. For example, if you wanted to automatically place your name and company's information in the upper left cell of a worksheet, you could use a macro to record your keystrokes as you create it once, and then run the macro in the future to repeat the exact same keystrokes you entered. This lets you instantaneously repeat the same process again later. While you can see advanced options for creating macros on the Developer tab in the ribbon if it is enabled, you can also use the Macros button group on the View tab of the ribbon to record and run basic macros. In this lesson, we will examine how to record a basic macro using the commands within this button group in the ribbon. To start recording a macro, click the Macros drop-down button in the Macros button group on the View tab of the ribbon. From the drop-down menu that appears, select the Record Macro command to open the Record Macro dialog box. In the Record Macro dialog box, enter a name for the new macro into the Macro Name field. Macro names cannot contain spaces. Its first character must also be a letter. Next, select the name of the workbook into which to save the macro by selecting its name from the Store Macro In drop-down. This is important because you may only run a macro that is attached to an open workbook or stored in the Personal Macro workbook, which is discussed later. To create a custom keyboard shortcut for the macro to use in conjunction with the control key, type the desired shortcut key letter into the field next to the Control Plus label. If you do this, make sure you don't overwrite an existing keyboard shortcut. For example, the shortcut character of P is a bad choice, as Control P is already a keyboard shortcut for the print command. If you aren't familiar with the keyboard shortcuts, it may be better to not assign one. When you are ready to start recording your actions, click the OK button. You can adjust the types of cell references you make in Excel while recording a macro. For example, assume that when you began recording your macro, your active cell was cell A1. From there, you clicked into cell D1. When Excel records you doing that, it can either record that action as a relative reference or an absolute reference. That action, if recorded using relative references, makes the active cell move four cells to the right of whichever cell is the active cell when you later run the macro. If you record it in absolute terms, Excel always moves to cell D1 from whichever cell is the active cell when you begin running the macro. To enable relative cell referencing while recording a macro, Click the Macros drop-down button in the Macros button group on the View tab of the ribbon. Then select the Use Relative References command from the drop-down menu. By default, Excel records macros using absolute references. To switch back to absolute cell referencing while recording a macro, click the Macros drop-down button in the Macros button group on the View tab of the ribbon. Then select the Use Relative References command again to turn it off. To stop recording a macro after you finish recording its actions, click the Macros drop-down button in the Macros button group on the View tab of the ribbon. Then select the Stop Recording command to stop recording the macro. Also remember that if you want to save a workbook that contains macros in Excel, you must select the Excel Macro Enabled Workbook choice from the Save As Type drop-down in the Save As dialog box or when using the Save As command in the Backstage view. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.